Sir Hugh Calverley, Knight and Keeper of the Channel Islands. Uh. Ow! Really smart. Uh. Uh. But no, no lasting damage, I think. And do not think that I hold Squire William to blame for that. Uh, that was my fault. Partially I think the strap failed on the shield, but also I just wasn't in the right place and his blow came straight through. Ah, uh, yes. But I have had worse. But I think that now I wear all this armour, the shields, they weigh you down. When we leave for Spain next week, let's just leave it behind. There is no point in wearing all of this armour, the best steel that money can buy, uh, and then encumber myself further with a shield. No, let us leave it behind, hang it on the wall as a keepsake. Now, uh, let me take that off. <laughs> and I hope Squire William will be all right as well. <laughs> uh, I think that's... Uh, some of his blood on my gauntlets. These can do just as much damage as any sword or axe. Now, in this box, you should know that there is an ointment made from a plant. Yarrow, we call it, or knight's wound wort. Yes, you take the plant and you boil it in goose grease. There we are. It works wonders. Helps to stop bruising. I've even heard it knits bones. Ah, this little pot has been my constant companion for the last 30 years. Ah, one of my most loyal companions too, I think. Yes, make sure you pack it when we leave. <clears throat> so, first lesson of the day, try and anticipate the blow before it arrives. And when it does arrive, be somewhere else. Now, well done. Some water to wash myself. Ugh. Fighting is such dirty, sweaty business. Oh. It's good to be refreshed when I come back and I see some wine. Well remembered. It is always good to come back to some wine. It's hot and thirsty work too. Now, hmm, it's not Bordeaux. Bayon? No. Gascon. It is Gascon wine. Ah, it is wine from your father. Some of the barrels he sent over as part payment for your training. Ah, well, you can tell him. It meets with my approval. Ah, I tell you what, I should tell some of the other knights the garrison, the castle in Southampton, that uh, uh, your father's wine is worth buying. Who knows? The king might get to hear about it and he could supply some barrels to Southampton Castle. Yes, most satisfactory. As your service to me has been so far. I mean, well done for spotting that pin on the buckle there that was broken. And not a bad little repair too. It will need to be done again though, much, much stronger. It is important to check all the parts of the armour. The buckles, the pins, straps, all the rivets. I mean, it is vital that everything works. I can only dread to think what would happen if this cooter seized up or, or this pollen seized, then my fortunes could change for the worse. And who's along with them? Yes, yours. So make sure you look to all these items. I must look my best for the expedition. You might win your spurs one day, and mark my words, someone might espy you. They, wearing all their beautiful silks and velvets from Cathay or Venice and beyond, and you in rust and rags. You see how that works. No, should the opportunity arrive, and both of you are arrayed in your finest clothes, there might be some dancing, very useful indeed. I shall teach you some of it later on when the minstrels are playing something in the hall later tonight. Yes, it's all part of being a knight, learning to be humble 
learning to be honest and brave, learning to serve your Lord and looking after the people below you, those not so lucky. And of course, reading, writing, singing, composing poetry and dancing as well. Uh, now, you may think it is difficult in armour, but there are some dances that we knights do, invented by the French, which shows how graceful we can be, even when fully clad in our armour. Yes, yes, tonight I shall teach you some dancing, like, like the French knights do. It is important to get used to your armour. There is a French knight, the Marshal of France no less, Sir Bertrand de Guesclin. Uh, when he puts his armour on, he proves to his men how capable he is by placing a ladder against a wall and climbing up it on the underside. Uh, a worthy adversary he is indeed. I have fought against him several times. Once, when we were in Brittany, he actually launched a raid upon our camp, so brave and bold that it impressed our commander greatly. He invited Sir Bertrand back in for food and drink, under a flag of truce, of course. And there, over a glass of wine, he said to Sir Bertrand, I wish for you to come and work for me. Uh, Sir Bertrand politely declined because he was sworn to serve a French lord. I know there's a lot to take in, but you'll manage. Uh, I don't think you're going to be in battle soon or finding yourself a partner. Yes, no marriage for you yet. And also, being the child of a merchant, certainly not anybody royal. Uh, but when you do find your match, then uh, be careful. Also look to their families. Some brothers and sisters don't like their lands being divided to give to somebody else. They don't like handing over large sums of money in a dowry. No, it's always best in your position, I would say, to aim a bit lower. Certainly nobody of the blood royal. Now, also, you must look to know who is who, who is allied with which lord or which count, who is fighting each other. It can become very confusing. Take, for example, Sir Bertrand. Um, I have fought against him many times. So the first time uh, I fought against him and lost. It was a, a small raid, but we were badly led. <sighs> no, he had the better of it that day, and uh, I was thrown to the ground, knocked clean off my horse. But luckily, in just in time, I was able to surrender, you know, place my knee upon the floor, throw my hands up, and show that I am no longer a threat. And so I was captured uh, and then ransomed back, as is the custom. Next, we met at the Great Battle of Ore, but there a reversal of fortune for Sir Bertrand, because it was he that was knocked from his horse and captured and ransomed. We next met in Castile, as I have mentioned, where we fought as allies, but at least all that fighting was done on land. I have been admiral as well. You try fighting against your adversaries when you're on board ship when not only are you trying to use bows or board the ship, but you are fighting against the wind and the waves. Yes, two ships sailing in stormy weather. Very difficult, very dangerous. Yet it was not so long ago when we raided Brittany. Uh, we won, but on the way back, a mighty storm blew up. And we lost 20 ships and nearly a thousand men. Yes, I... I I much prefer strong walls and roofs over my head, a good strong and mighty castle, like here at Montorgai. It is part of my task here to make sure the castle remains in good repair and defensible. I'm just glad it's not mine. The demands for money are relentless, the bills keep pouring in, but luckily the king pays for all of it. But our job is to use it for his good, and for Jersey's as well, and make sure it doesn't fall into a state of decay. But the cost, it mounts up. I mean, see here, uh, all these bills we have. Here we are, uh, slates for the roofs, nails to put the slates on the roofs, timber for the roofs. Uh, there's lime, that's for the lime washing of the walls, uh, the mortar and the plaster, uh, all sorts of things. Uh, here we are, um, lead, lead for the roof as well. There's so much of it. I am glad the king has a, a big purse. I was going through some of the older records, and it seems that when they were building the castle at first, a thousand trees came over from England to, to form the palisade. At least now that our walls are made of stone, and that's something that can be had on the island. 
Uh, and also the fodder comes from hereabouts as well uh, for the horses. Yes, the expense is most great, but also we must not forget that there are things other than the walls and the towers and the mighty keep. There's the bakehouse, the brewery, pantry, and the chapel. It all adds up. But also, a castle is not just the buildings. It is the people within as well. Uh, there are bills for the, the garrison. Uh, here we have three men at arms must be paid for and their armour, much like mine. There is the wages for the constable and the steward. Thirty soldiers. Yes, it was not so long ago that people of Jersey helped garrison the castle. But then it was decided that each should look to its own. This, of course, is an English castle. So within the castle, there are English soldiers. Men of Jersey will look after the island. And if anything should go amiss, then, well, the people of Jersey can come and shelter in here. Uh, as is only right. And of course, the people know that help will come from England. Yes, the last time the French raided Jersey, of course, who was at their head? Yes, Bertrand de Guesclin laid siege to the castle. At that time, repairs had not been done. The doors were damaged. It was easy to get in. He first came through the first gate, then he smashed down the second, but on the third gate, he had difficulty. He could not tunnel under because of the rock and the walls were too mighty for him to climb over. So he stayed here for two months, laying siege to us. But luckily, a fleet from England eventually arrived and he had to leave. So I think we'll chalk that up as another win for England. But of course, all the sieges take up supplies. Look, more items have just arrived. Four mail shirts, four helmets made of iron, four breastplates, four mail collars, very important, 2,000 arrows, 500 crossbow bolts, six swords, six spears, 500 bolts for the spring old our siege engines, and caltrops to strew upon the floor. If you tread on one of those, you will be in severe pain. Yes, I can say that Montorgai is now firmly defensible. Nobody shall get through these gates and walls. Uh, my friend in England, Sir Robert Knollys, also informs us that the King is going to furnish Montorgai with guns. We are soon to have cannon and, of course, barrels of gunpowder, and the men who are wise to this new weapon. Gunners, who understand the science of gunpowder, for I do not. Now, we are soon to return to Spain. With Castile in disarray again, John of Gaunt has asked me to accompany him on an expedition. So, we shall leave very, very soon, and you must make sure everything is packed and ready. Well, I hope I really hope that we are to have battles on open land, not sieges. Who wants to stay in a tent in the wind and the rain sometimes, or in the scorching sun, and watch a castle from afar or a town? But where is the chivalry in that? I long for action, not digging holes under a castle or, or battering at the door of a town. No, or worse still, waiting for the people inside to run out of food so they surrender, or have their friends turn up so we must leave? No. Where is the chance to, to draw your sword? Where is the chance for single combat, for challenging the enemy? I wish to be on my horse, riding into a press of enemy knights. Yes, that is where it is for me, upon the battlefield. Tomorrow, meet me here and we shall start checking for all the supplies to go to Spain. But tonight, do not forget that I have to teach you some dances. So sleep well. And I will see you on the morrow. <laughs>